for race one. Craig Lowndes on pole, a sensational time. It's around about 0.5 of a second outside the qualifying lap record set last year by Jason Bright. Larry Perkins, what about that? The first time he's been on the front row since Malala 1997. His teammate Russell Eagle and Paul Radisich on row two. Larkham and Scape, row three. Signan Richards on row four. Yeah, Mark Scape a little bit further than, back than he'd like to be, but he got bonked by traffic yesterday. Didn't get a clean run. Tony Longhurst and Garth Tanner. Longhurst has been quick throughout qualifying. Stephen Ellery, good effort too in the super cheap car, moving up through the pack. Greg Murphy in the brand new Kmart Commodore. Neil Crompton and Todd Kelly start out behind them. Jason Bargwana not having the best of weekends in terms of setup with the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. He lines up beside Rodney Forbes. Paul Morris is back in the BS Commodore that Garth Tander campaigned last season. Steve Johnson, then it's Baird and McLean, Paul Wheel and Brad Jones on row 12. Cameron McConville in the Repco Commodore and Dougal McDougal alongside the Pepsi machine. Steve Reed and Mick Donoghue start out of row 14. Rick Bates having another run in the Caliscan Ford and Trevor Ashby alongside in the Lansvale Commodore. Rod Nash and Paul Romano out of 32. And there is the back of the grid. Huge field here at Calder Park. Alan Heath, Anthony Tratt and Mike Emery making his return as well after that crash in Queensland. Well, we've seen plenty of action and excitement at Calder Park over the years. It's a fairly simple, non-technical circuit, but boy, does it create some action. Let's have a look through the in-car cameras that'll have all our action covered for you today. Brad Jones, the Aussie Mail Racing Falcon, Views covered from a number of different angles here. Glenn Seaton, the man suffering, he's got the cold or a dose of the flu. He's not feeling well. He's been struggling all week. We saw him actually having a coughing fit inside the car during qualifying yesterday, so he is not in good shape. His teammate Neil Crompton is struggling as well. He says he's picked it up. Here is the be clear and simple on board cam with John Bow, who's also been struggling with setup this weekend in the Caterpillar Ford. So we'll keep an eye on his progress. And Paul Radisich, the Shell Helix onboard camera, as you ride with the Rat, the best of the four campaigners, and on the second row of the grid for this race. Like he said, I think his words were, I can do plenty of damage from here. Look at the intensity in the face of Mark Larkham and the Mitre 10 in-car camera. The man who survived that fiery crash at Oran Park only three weeks ago. His team have done an absolutely amazing job to get that car, new car built in time. They've turned it around very quickly in pole position, of course, the Walker in-car camera with Craig Lowndes, our reigning Shell Series champion. A fabulous view from the back seat of the HRT Commodore. So we've got everything covered here as the action is about to explode. The first corner is really going to be interesting. When, when you've got uh, England Radisic uh, together, it's uh, two hard charges, so it should be really good. Fun. Check out the Ford race analysis. 35 starters on the grid, 21 laps the distance for each of the heats, which run under about 50 k's. And look at that, the first 25th position on the grid covered by a second. That must be some sort of a record. And last year's winner, Mark Scape, sitting a little bit further back in the pack than he'd like today. A real mixture of youth and experience on the front row there. Craig Lowndes and Larry Perkins. Who will get the jump? There's row two. The Enforcer and the Rat side by side. Mark Larkham and our championship leader, Mark Scape, oh. on the third row. Look at that. Lowndes launches off the line. Paul Radisich, a brilliant start. So too, Russell Ingle. He gets around the boss as they work towards turn one for the first time. Yeah, Perkins made a bit of a muck up at the side. And what happened, it seemed to go and then uh, slow right up. So it's a bit of a struggle. Ingle on the inside there. Look at Radisich muscling what? on the outside of the Shell 1840. Got a fantastic start off the second row. He threatened to do that. He's on the outside of the pack now as they swing out of turn one. Ingle. Gets himself up into second position, and what a good start from Scaife. I think he's up into one of those two positions, third or fourth, I think it's fourth. No, he's in third, so he's leapfrog Lowndes. Lowndes had a terrible start. Mark Scaife has jumped from sixth to third in the space of half a lap. Cheers, they come through that flip-flop part of the circuit there. They're all tightly bunched up. Mark, look at it at the front, it's like a freight train. The man in front, Russell Ingle, the enforcer from the Rat. So the Shell Helix race team, on a charge here at the moment, the guys who are sitting on the second row of the grid for the commencement of this race have charged to the lead. Now look at Scape having a look at Radisic already. He is really moving up through the field. Well, Scape will be breathing a sigh of relief. He was very worried about sitting that far in the back of the pack. He doesn't get down there often. He didn't want to be involved in any argy-bargy in the opening lap. They've had a nice clean start. The two Holden Racing Team Commodores, Russell Ingelow, it's in command. Shame for Perkins. I don't know what he did off the off the grid, but it started to go, and then uh, I thought uh, something had broken, but it's uh, hooked up in the end, so I don't know what happened there. Larkham's new minor 10 oh. Ford showing a few battle scars. He's dropped back a couple of positions as well. Larkham at the moment is in position eight, so he's dropped three spots from the start of this one in the brand new minor 10 Ford. Ingle leads from Radisich, Mark Scaife, Lowndes, Perkins, Stephen Richards, Tander. Larkham, Ellery and Seaton, they are the 10. Here is your leader. 
Well, Next, that's... <laughs> sorry, Mark. As we've seen so many times in this Shell Championship, you get a good qualifying position. It's crucial to your championship hopes. And Paul Radisic had a great qualifying yesterday, and he's taken full advantage of that left off the second row. Now he finds himself in second position as the cars thunder down this main straight, building up to speeds, 260 kilometres an hour on the approach to turn one. Now they get hard on the brakes over the bumps down here. Cars get very, very unstable as they break hard for turn one. Stephen Richards in a good position in the Kmart Commodore. Yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, when Scafie uh, really gets on the boil to, to see him try and get past uh, Radisic and Engel. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, not an easy pair. They're really hard chargers, so I think we're going to see a bit of fireworks here. Another one to keep an eye on today is young Garth Tander. Seventh at the moment, Russell Engel leading the way and the fastest man on the circuit, a 57.155. So times down on what we saw in qualifying yesterday but to give you an idea the temperature here in melbourne today air temperature is only 13 degrees track temperature is 14 degrees so it really does take some time to get the heat generated right up through these bridgestone tires and get them working at their maximum here's the man working in the office paul radisic trying to hunt down our leader russell ingle not a lot uh, not a lot in it and top speed is there you see uh, maybe just going in a little on uh Engel's thing critical thing here baz is Getting your power down oh, effectively. Oh, that's bad. He's having a disastrous year, isn't he, really? Just terrible. Yeah, he goes right to the back of the pack, coming onto the main straight. The critical thing here is power down. This is not a technical circuit. It's very straightforward. Full throttle, brake turn, full throttle, brake turn. And the really critical thing here is setup is to be able to get maximum power to the ground from low speed. You're just launching out of low speed corners the whole time. What a lot of these drivers talk about is you can really punish the rear tyres as a result. Oh, look up there from Radisic. In fact, one of the techniques a lot of the teams were employing yesterday in those cold conditions was to do one, maybe two laps in the early session of qualifying, then put the rear tyres onto the front because yeah. they always had a lot of heat into them. And they have a lot of trouble getting heat in the front tyres in cold conditions. Oh, that, Radisic, look at this. That helped a lot of the competitors. Russell Engel, check it out on the Monroe driver profile has not had a good season, a terrible start to the Shell Championship season in 2000. He's currently eighth in the point standings with 607 points to Mark Scaife's 1,035. So he's well out of championship contention, but he has admitted that now every round as they build up to Bathurst is going to be like a sorting session for Mount Panorama. Russell Ingall twice a runner-up in this championship season 2000, not the best of it. But here is a replay. Oh, it's an incident oh. there, Baird and uh, Stephen Johnson. Yeah, it looks like Baird hits um, Johnson up the bum, didn't it, really? So that's what we saw before the aftermath when Baird rejoined the circuit. As I mentioned, Russell, 98 runner-up in the championship and the same again in 99, not having the best of seasons. As Mark mentioned, the 2000 Shell Championship Series, he has been a winner on two occasions. Did it in the final race of the day at Eastern Creek and... The middle race, the reverse grid race at Orange Park just a couple of weeks ago. Stephen Richards in the Kmart, Commodore at the back of this leading. Charge down the main straight. Russell Engel still in command from Paul Radisic. And it's the two Holden Racing Team Commodores, Scaife and Craig Lands. Oh, out somebody Paul. lock up there. I saw some smoke. I think it must have been Scaife who locked up there. Now, pole position man back in fourth now. Kmart Commodore in fifth. Stephen Richards, 28 year old. Originally from Auckland in New Zealand now. Places himself in Victoria. Oh, look at this. <laughs> a little bit further back in the pack. This is Cameron McConville getting plenty of heat from Mick Donner and Dougal McDougal up the inside of the Pepsi Commodore. Always see plenty of elbowing going on further back in the pack. As they come over the rise down toward the back straight once again. If you've just joined us, this is race one, round 10 of the Shell Championship Series. Ingle leads, there he is from Paul Radisic, a holding ahead of the fourth. Mark Scaife, our championship leader in third from defending champion Craig Lowndes, and it's Richards Tander who has climbed from 10th position at the start of this race up to sixth now. Then it's Larkham, Ellerick, Seaton and Longhurst. Now, you may be wondering, in terms of qualifying, where Larry Perkins has ended up at the moment. He has dropped down through the field. He didn't have the best of starts, and he is now outside the top 10. In fact, now in 12th position, LP. This just goes to show, when you get stuck in this pack, how close and even the competition is, particularly on a track like Corley. You saw the proof of the pudding after qualifying. 1 to 25 on the grid, covered by less than one second. Oh, Morris. The man of the moment, Paul Morris. He's still in some pain from that crash at Oran Park three weeks ago. The car's suffering some pain here. A bit of battle damage on the front as he lips down pit lane. It's going to be interesting to see how the, uh, the difference in the... Uh 
thought the whole news the tyres said we get towards the when you get towards the end of this race to see uh, to see who's sliding around more either Radisich or Ingle. Talking to Stephen Ellery prior to the commencement of this race, very happy with the way the Super Chip Auto Ford is coming along. He's currently in eighth position. And he's doing very well in terms of qualifying. He says the car's got a really nice balance to it. And as we mentioned, or well, Mark mentioned at the head of the show, the Fords are running this new Tiga front bumper. And the thing they're finding with it here at Calder is it tends to turn in a lot easier and much smoother to drive. And this is only early days too. Like these, uh, a lot of these front spoiler sections were only delivered very late. So a lot of these Ford teams haven't had a chance to do some proper testing with this new front spoiler. And as they found out, you wouldn't think aerodynamics play a huge part in these cars, but it does. I mean, it really has transformed the response of the chassis, the consistency of it, and the balance that they can get in the car. So all the four teams that are running this new Tiga bumper, as you can see it there on Stephen Ellery's car, are very happy with the new device, and I'm sure it's going to improve as they get more testing time done. Be clear and simple on board. We join John Bow in 15th position. Ahead of him, Jason Barguana, a run onto the front straight. So crucial to get, to get the power down there. I'm just, I'm just looking at Tanders, uh, Creeping up the back there, he's in sixth place behind Richards. All right, we'll take you for a ride around Calder Park. Sit back and enjoy with John Bow. Oh, something oh, wrong with Oh, no, what's happened there? Oh, it's like some sort of Motor mechanical failure. What happened, Rock? Jammed in gear. Oh. Now this has happened before. It Don't has. forget Oren yeah. Park. Yep. The final race of the day. Oh, We've got a spin is. there. Bates and Rodney Forbes possibly coming into contact. Now I'm not sure what's going on with that. We've had a few funny sort of niggling problems with the Hollinger gearboxes this year and, and particularly... So uncharacteristic. Yeah, Russell Engel. That's the second time he's had a jam gearbox. It's very unlikely these things are normally bulletproof and this year more than any season I can remember we have, have had a number of gearbox problems. So Russell Engel, what a crushing blow to the Castrol team. The car jammed in gear. You can hear him talking to the team as he lifted back around the pit lane. Well, to finish first, first you've got to finish. It's an old saying in motor racing that you cannot afford those things happening. Russell Engel will be very, very unhappy about that. Yeah, I thought he was very reserved when he said what's happened. He said it's stuck in gear. Yeah. <laughs> Lap so, 10 of of 21 and Paul Radisic leading the way and maybe at this stage on course for his second race win of the season. There's the enforcer. What a shame. Very, very disappointing for him. Ford fans are cheering though. You can hear them around the circuit yelling as Paul Radisic takes over the lead in the Shell 18 Helix Ford. Paul Radisic now ahead of Scaife, Lowndes, Richards and Tander. Here's pit lane. Russell Engel will be furious about that. He was looking in a commanding position leading this one. But now that throws the door open to Paul Radisic. He's under full attack now from the Holden Racing Team duo. Mark Scaife in second. Craig Lowndes, our pole position man in third. Stephen Richards, though, excellent performance in the Kmart Commodore. The same before, this team are really starting to turn around their qualifying performances. Dismal last year, and they struggled early in this year. Oh, it's Todd Kelly. Oh, Todd Kelly and Forbes. Now, there was actually no contact there that I could see. Let's have a look. No, another replay, Baz. Another incident. There's plenty of things oh, going on around this circuit. Dear me, get out of the oh, world. I think you'll find there. That guy was a little bit worried. The base, he was a bit worried. They're about to T-boat in Forbes, I think. They got on the brakes a bit, and she just locked up and spun around. So Radisic. 57.35 his last time across. I thought they'd lap in the low 57s. He's doing that at the moment. Could the Rat be on course for his second win of the season and the fourth race victory for Ford? We will find out. At the moment, he leads from Scape and Lounge. Stephen Richards, a good job in the Kmart Commodore in fourth. Then it's Garth Tander, Larkham. A return to racing and a great uh, performance to sixth. And it's Ellery and Glenn Seaton currently in eighth position. Greg Murphy Perkins has worked his way back up to tenth. And we'll be back with more. Stay with us right here at Calder Park. We are back at Calder Park and Paul Radisic is leading the way in the Shell Helix Ford at the moment and wouldn't the Dick Johnson racing team love it if this guy could take out the race at the moment. His team say he is lapping two tenths of a second quicker than our championship leader Mark Scaife who's in second place. Look at that great shot out the back of the Shell Helix Ford. Some daunting clouds off in the distance. Hopefully we won't see any rain here today. The Bureau overnight said it uh, should be clear around about 14 degrees. 
and the Rat working away in the office. A bit surprised to see his teammate so far down in the order, though. Stephen mm. Johnson's back in 18th at the moment, right back in the pack. He's been struggling, though, hasn't he, all the way through uh, practice and qualifying. He hasn't had a good time, Stephen. So. Super cheap autos team. Good, consistent performance. They're sitting well inside the top ten. Seventh now for Stephen Ellery, who's at the back of this leading pack. There he is in the super cheap autos car oh, behind look at the, the minor ten car. Look at the mirror on Mike's car. So it's a brand new Falcon. It's first race. Been christened. Super cheap autos car. Yeah, interesting. I was saying that uh, they're getting some more experienced team personnel on board now. I know Lee Guy, our former chief mechanic with Dick Johnson Racing, switched to that team earlier this year. And they're getting some more personnel on, on staff so that what they were doing when they didn't have enough people, they were spending so much time turning the car around between races, they really didn't have a lot of time to concentrate on setup and work out strategy. But now that they're getting their team structure right, you're starting to see the results on the tracks. Good, good effort from Stephen. Mark said that um, when they when they bought the new car out, they took it uh, to Queensland Raceway, and after about 10 laps, the thing was right on the pace. You know, it was as quick as the other cars. So that's amazing these days, isn't it? You know, with all the computer setup and all that kind of stuff, well, that the, they can produce a car so equal. The thing that is so amazing about that, Baz, Mark Larkham's Mitre 10 team have basically spent the equivalent of 2,000 man hours. A team of eight blokes have been working 12 to 15 hours a day to finish that car and get it right. And he's back at racing at the moment, doing a terrific job. Stephen Ellery, though, we've spoken so many times, Mark, about his performances at Mount Panorama in recent years with Tony Longhurst and, of course, last year with Paul Radisic. And it's no wonder this team is starting to come on strong. Yeah, it's good to see Stephen Richards. It's remaining fairly static at the top. Radisic is holding a little bit of a gap over Mark Scaife, Craig Lowndes in third, there's Richards, Tander. Tander's been able to turn things around, he was all sorts of trouble in practice, they couldn't get the car working properly, all sorts of chassis imbalance problems, had plenty of rear grip but just couldn't get the front of the car to work properly, but they were third quickest in the warm-up this morning, so overnight they've done it again, this team's done their homework. And he's to come up with a setup that's working much better on the Valvoline Cummins machine. They always do, though, don't they? I mean, they yep. always struggle in, in practice, practice and qualifying. Oh, I didn't. Normally, in practice, they did a little bit better in qualifying than they're much better in the race. They... You, you cast your mind back to the Queensland round of the championship. I think he qualified somewhere like 12th. Yeah. And by the end of the day, he worked his way up to yeah. third. So that's exactly right, Baz. He does tend to do that. And Stephen Richards in front of him there in fourth at the moment in the Kmart Commodore. That's going particularly well. His teammate, Greg Murphy, is also inside the top 10 in a brand new Commodore for that team, a car that both Steve and Greg will share, the Queensland 500 and at Bathurst, and the thing the team are pleased about the most there is that both cars they now believe are, from a chassis point of view, set up very, very similarly, so the drivers can give feedback and help work one another up the field. There it is, the beautiful Mitre 10 Ford, battle damage from that opening lap, and it always seems to happen at Call the Park. Passenger mirror flapping in the breeze, and look at that. Oh, you don't get much closer than that, do you? We're talking to him in the lead-up to this race, and he says that right now he is in what they call Larco land, heading in towards the end of the championship. He loves all these circuits, uh, the Queensland 500, obviously, Bathurst, and he's looking for some really strong results in the Mitre 10 Ford as we take you for a ride around Calder. Circuit is very, very quick. Flat through the kink there, it's, uh, it's awfully quick. remaining in this one 260 kilometers an hour you saw it on the road speed there you don't see with two, with 600 odd horsepower you did, we're looking at that picture in the uh, in the foot well you don't see him stamping the old right hand pedal with a big, with a big foot full, do you? now the interesting thing at the moment mark larkham is in the box yeah. seat to get a good run in heat two he's in sixth and don't forget they reversed the top yeah. six finishing positions from heat one so larkham is now in pole position for Heat 2, the start of Heat 2. So if he stays in sixth, that's going to be a good start for Mitre 10 in Heat 2. Here's the one leading this one, though, Paul Radisic. And he has every answer for the Holden Racing Team at the moment. Actually, that would be a really good front row of the grid when you think about it, Mark. That's going to be Larkham and Tander. Row of the grid. Yep. 
Tanner in desperate need of points too. He's currently third in the championship, 37 behind Glenn Seaton, who is in second. Three laps remaining in this one. Paul Radisic leading the way from Mark Scape, Craig Lowndes in third. It's the field stream by there. Don't forget, of course, folks, if you're a person who can't leave home without the laptop like Barry Sheen, or you want to uh, get on the net quite a lot, <laughs> check out the official V8 Supercar website, v8supercar.com.au. There's a, a heap of links to all the teams there as well, including the new site which was launched on Friday for Ford Tickford Racing. There's also a link there to the Channel 10 website for all your programming information, the RPM site as well. Check it out, 10.com.au. Fantastic shot from the back of Craig Lowndes Commodore there. Walker in car camera takes you for a ride with the reigning Shell Series champion. As he winds lock on coming out of that slow corner onto the main straight. Starts feeding it some gears. As they come onto the main. Two laps remaining. Here's the message for Paul Radisic. This will be an outstanding performance. He can bring the Shell Ford home in first position. It's been a very tough season in 2000 for both Paul Radisic, Stephen Johnson, and of course the Dick Johnson racing team. But Radisic still hanging on in fifth position. He's still in a strong position in the championship. 77 points behind Craig Lowndes. Oh, Romano. no. What's happened here? Romano. Sounds like it's oh, nice sounds like, Oh, dear me. Look at that. That looks expensive, most Oh! oh, oh Todd Kelly! Jam Bow! Jam Bow! Oh. Well, oh. Major collision. That looked a bit, didn't it? Down the end of the main straight, it looks like. We'll have a look at that on the replay in a moment, but... Big collision there. John Bow has been caught up in so many tangles. Yeah, it was down the end of the main straight. He is so frustrated this year by the amount of panel damage and the number of times he has been innocently turned around. I'm not sure if that was Kelly's fault in that instance, but John Bow has been caught up in so much carnage this year. He's a panel burner's dream, isn't he? Final lap for Paul Radisic. John Bow gathers it all up. Todd Kelly, though, is still stranded down there in the My Car Holton Young Lions machine. On our way home here, folks, this is the last lap. Paul Radisic leading the way. Here's John Bow just getting around Rick Bates. He's dropped right back because of that uh, altercation. There's oh, the Romano you know, thinks on fire. Bites. Yeah. There's smoke pouring out from under the bottom of that car. I hope that yeah, fire marshal. Get in there a bit lively, but it'll extinguish, otherwise it's going to get expensive. Radisic just goes past that stricken car, and so does Mark Scaife and Craig Lowndes. I've got to tell you, Radisic has really pulled out a... A nice handy lead on these on these two. Outstanding performance, isn't it? This is a sign of things to come. Ford fans will be cheering at Mount Panorama this year. Shell team looking in fine form at Calder Park this afternoon. A great morale boost for Dick Johnson, Dinor, and all the Shell Helix racing team. The rest is right Fantastic on the money. Guys. Listen, we've got a lot of noise at the desk or the gearbox. I think about to uh, distract Dick so well. We need to check out. But well done, everybody. Well. Top top. There you go. So he's, he's actually struggled to the line there. He thinks there's some sort of problem with the differential, maybe, or the gearbox. So that's a great result for Paul Radisic, all things considered. He takes the race win from Mark Scape and Craig Lowndes. Stephen Richards in fourth. Garth Tander, fifth. And Mark Larkham completes your top six. So Tander and Larkham will line up on the front row for race two. And how about that? The man who was involved in that huge crash at Oran Park will have pole for race two. Fantastic, yeah. and well done also to DJR. Well, I think the thing with um, with Radisic's car, the, what they'll do, they'll just whack a new gearbox in it, and you don't know what we got here. Oh, this is, um, oh, it's JB and uh, Todd Kelly. Looks like... Uh, now, to give, you, oh, you, the, to give you folks an idea at home, that incident would have started at around yeah, 260 very, very kilometres quick. an hour. Yeah. That's... Uh, this is another something. angle. Yeah, you can't read. It's uh, very hard to very hard to pass any comment on it because the top was very close to the grass, yes. and um, you know it's just uh, one of those things. He was getting up, trying to get up the inside, and um, that's basically where the only gap was. Radisic is the man who walks away with race one here at Winston. Mark Scape home second, Lowndes a sensational job in third. And Stephen Richards for the Kmart Racing Team, a good performance also in fourth. Well done to Garth Tander. He needs those championship points and he's finished ahead of Glenn Seaton, who is second in the championship chase and just ahead of him. Greg Murphy finishes in ninth position, Tony Longhurst tenth. Larry recovers after that unfortunate start for 11th. We go further back and Paul Wheel gets inside the top 16. Sensational performance.